So there are a number of different patterns of progression uh, in patients with mantle cell lymphoma. And like other lymphomas, particularly the indolent lymphomas, the, the decision or the, the plan as to what to do depends a little bit on what the patient had before, what their overall situation is, what their symptoms are, uh, and how well whatever they had before worked. So patients often present in a similar fashion to how they initially presented. Again, lymphadenopathy, cytopenias, uh, perhaps splenomegaly, uh, really a, a broader range, a range of presentations or presentations of relapse uh, are how patients declare themselves from the standpoint of having relapse disease. And so the approach that would guide our, th our therapy really relate to A, does a patient have symptoms and, and low tumor burden, non-bulky disease, in those case, cases may, we may watch and wait. B, is a patient symptomatic and need treatment? And if so, what is the pattern of their relapse with respect to the time from their previous therapy? Did they have disease that took a long time to relapse, several years, or did they progress within a short period of time or their prior therapy? And obviously that acuity or that rapidity of relapse may influence uh, how likely we are to watch and wait versus move sooner rather than later to, to treatment. Uh, and then finally, the, the overall condition of the patient, are they elderly, are they young, what did they have before, all of those might influence our decision into how to proceed. The management of relapse lymphoma uh, depends on a, on a whole variety of factors. Um, how old is the patient? How healthy is the patient? What did the patient get as their initial treatment for mantle cell lymphoma? How well did that treatment work? And so it's hard to really um, give a blueprint approach for how you would manage relapse mantle cell lymphoma. But just to make some general broad statements, uh, this is where targeted agents are really having an impact. So we have several agents that are approved for use in relapse mantle cell lymphoma. We have the proteasome inhibitor bortezomib, uh, we have revlimid, and we have ibrutinib, all targeted agents that are approved for use in mantle cell lymphoma. In Europe, they have temsirolimus as well. So these are all useful agents for the management of relapse mantle cell lymphoma. Of those, I think ibrutinib is the most active, has the highest response rate, has the best uh, safety and side effect profile. And so that's a very commonly utilized strategy for relapse mantle cell lymphoma. Having said that, abrutinib responses don't last forever. And so uh, you need to have other options for those patients. Other things that can be considered for relapse mantle cell are things like stem cell transplantation. Uh, allogeneic stem cell transplantation appears to have curative potential for relapse mantle cell lymphoma. The problem is the risk. There's about a 20 to 30% chance uh, of dying from a transplant-related complication in the first two years after that strategy. So it's a, it's a high-risk, high-reward approach. Uh, for young patients, though, I think that should be offered as an option. You know, if you're 58 years old with relapsed mantle cell lymphoma, the odds of making it to age 65 or 70 are not very good. And so taking this high-risk approach of the allo stem cell transplant may actually become your best option if you're a young patient with, with relapsed mantle cell lymphoma. In the relapse setting, the younger fit patient may be approached in a couple of different ways. I would say that if such a patient had had extensive prior therapy, if they had been treated aggressively, maybe had an autologous stem cell transplant uh, as part of their initial treatment and had a long remission and had relapsed with relatively low tumor burden disease, that may be someone we would watch. That may be a patient where we might tr treat less aggressively, giving them something like lenalidomide or ibrutinib. On the other hand, that may be a patient where we would uh, also consider something like allogeneic transplant at some point. And so those issues, much as in follicular lymphoma in the relapse setting, um, there are a range of options, and some of that really depends on the pace of the disease and the patient's clinical preferences. So more aggressive disease, I might be thinking more aggressive treatment. Less aggressive disease, slow progression, I might be thinking less aggressive treatment, keep the disease quiet.
Allo transplant has an interesting role in mantle cell lymphoma, and I would say it's not extremely well defined as to exactly when and for whom one performs an allo transplant. Some people would argue that if you're going to do a transplant, you should do an allo transplant because that is what's going to give you the, the possibility of a cure. That being said, um, many patients who are, are candidates for allo transplant, meaning younger and fitter, generally speaking, are going to probably end up getting an auto transplant before they get an allo transplant. But again, these are different preferences, different patterns of, of disease. So I would typically consider an allo transplant in a patient with mantle cell lymphoma who was fit and a candidate for transplant, who had relapse disease, and probably in someone who had at least had prior auto transplant and relapse later, or in someone where the disease was becoming a little bit more resistant, less chemosensitive, and had been through a couple of prior therapies, and the concern was that the standard therapies such as chemotherapy and some of the biologics perhaps weren't likely to give a very long remission, and therefore considering allo might make more sense with the hope of a much longer term remission where the risk of the allo transplant might be more justified. The management of older mantle cell patients is particularly challenging because it's a bad disease and all of the useful agents have a fair bit of toxicity associated with them. And so the elderly patient certainly is not a candidate for intensive treatment, may not tolerate bendamustine based regimens very well. Uh, this is where some of the new targeted agents might turn out to have a very useful role. So abrutinib does not have a frontline indication in mantle cell lymphoma, but that I think would be an option for an elderly frail patient. Uh, single agent abrutinib or abrutinib combined with rituximab, uh, generally more well tolerated than traditional cytotoxic agents. Uh, lenalidomide combined with rituximab is also a very useful combination for um, relapse mantle cell lymphoma, and I think certainly could be considered in an elderly frail patient as a frontline option if they're really not appropriate for, for standard cytotoxic chemotherapy.